guys, you're back. Well, I know you're wondering what's up with the background. Uh, it doesn't look like a squeeze background, but it is still the squeeze. We just decided to spice things a little, you know, make it look more like we're trying to bring in more ideas, you know. Yeah, but yeah. it's still the squeeze, a show that gives you everything entertainment. Well, squeeze out for you. My name is Nancy. Yes, I'm sure they love us anyway <laughs> with the new set. Well, as usual on the show, we'll fill you in on the gossip, the interviews, the updates, and a lot of exciting countdowns. My name is Seymour. Now let's take you straight to the headlines. More second-hand celebrity marriages. Blogger tells T-Bills to take care of his children. Following Tiwa and T-Bills' footstep, it seemed like singer Emma Naira in love with her manager. Well, I think they're still, they're still uh, allegedly. Yes, allegedly. Okay. New appointment for Nollywood actor Bob Mano Udoku. Actor, director Kunle Afolayo diagnosed with hypertension. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I built my 110 million Naira house on mortgage, Dr. Seed reveals. Stop all this bring back our girls protest. Densia says, is Stella Damasius and Daniel Ademinoko married? Ibuka takes his wife at former beauty queen and gets lashed at. And then our countdown for this week, we take a look at the top 10 Nigerian Hollywood actors. Finally, you don't want to miss what we'll be ranting about on our Stop It segment. Very true. All this and more is what we're squeezing out for you today. So get your popcorn and drinks ready because the fun is about to begin. That's true. But that will be right after this short break. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The Squeeze. Now, last week we talked about the controversial second-hand husband that singer etc. spoke about and how newly wedded couple Tiwa and T-Bills lashed back at the singer. Well, guess what? Someone else has got something to say to the couple. Mm-hmm. Blogger Miss Udwak, who blogs at africamusiclaw.com, thinks instead of T-Bills and Tiwa responding to Exeteria's article, T-Bills should be more focused on taking care of his existing children with another woman in LA or more drama would unfold. Well, the blogger shared her thoughts about Funke Akindele and Mercy Johnson's marriages too. She says it's not whether these husbands are second-hand husbands, but rather whether they fulfill their responsibilities to their children or ex-spouses where a prior marriage was concerned before attempting to remarry. She goes further to say that though actress Funke Akindele's marriage might have been the exception to the rule, but that was justified under the Islamic religion where a man can have more than one wife. However, more direct non-religious examples of controversial weddings follow. Then she gives examples stating Miss Johnson who married a man who was allegedly still married in Italy. His Italian Nigerian wife even produced valid marriage documents yet Mercy Johnson married him. To resolve that issue, the man sought for a traditional divorce of his Italian wife in Nigeria. Well, she brings her attention to the fact that till date, the supposed wife in Italy hasn't filed for a divorce. Now, Ms. Utwak asked the really big question. Why anyone would say yes to a man that has not broken ties from a previous marriage, that is, he is still married with two kids? Well, wow. she gave an answer straight away to that question saying, divorce and marry. Don't take someone to the altar while you are legally married to another, especially where your soon-to-be wife allegedly has no clue. Okay, Miss Blogger takes us to case number two. Now, this is sounding more like a court case from a movie scene. Anyways, the second example is the Tiwa Savage case. Tiwa Savage's marriage to T-Bills was controversial regardless of the luxurious weddings and fanfare. Initially, most were very happy for her. I mean, she's a darling of the industry. <laughs> However, when a Nigerian-American Los Angeles-based woman emerged on the internet, complete with pictures of T-Bills with two children he fathered by this woman and accused T-Bills of not providing for his children and not having contact with them for some years now, it became quite embarrassing to watch and imagine that it was just Siwa Savage who actually wanted to spend the rest of her life with him. Wow. <laughs> well, to my knowledge, there are no explicit denial by T-Bills of the accusation. Rather, he made a statement on how he tries to be the best father. Meanwhile, you had Tiwa Savage singing praises on how T-Bills was the best and believed and invested in her when others would not. If you all recall, I mentioned that your manager is supposed to believe in you and invest in you the way that he does. Even if you're a female artist, it is no different than his investment in a male artist. Well, the blogger went on to say, 
fast forward, these two are now married and a colleague writes an article that refers to her choice for a husband as a second-hand husband. While he does not name Tiwa and T-bills, the clear inference given the fact he cites is that he refers to them. I am not sure Etc's article warranted a response, but then there will be many that will hold the opinion that T-bills is a second-hand husband. On the flip side, there will be some who can appreciate the role a manager has in the career of an artist, but for his business sense and vision, the deals brokered and the strategic placement of the Tiwa Savage brand to become successful would not have occurred. Arguably, that they happen to fall in love does not make him secondhand. I think the only thing T. Bill should be concerned about is taking care of his existing children with the woman in LA. So, we don't see such spills on the internet making his private lives with Tiwa one for dissecting. He does have a duty to protect her, doesn't he? I think he does. He does. Um, for me, I think she, the blogger, has a point. Mm -hmm. I mean, he should take care. He should have taken care of his business, you know, before moving on with Tiwa and then throwing all the whole married thing out but there. But what if he has? You know, sometimes if we women we just like to nag and we never said we can't. They can't satisfy us sometimes. So I think he might have actually satisfied her and tried to, you know, put everything in place and take care of his kids. Okay. But she just might not be satisfied and contented. She probably wants to be the one uh, TB's got married to. So I think that's the problem. I don't know what's up with them anyway. We can't say what really happens behind closed doors, but the blogger actually tried, you know, trying to bring up all of this information and trying to, you know, make it sound like she knew what's going on in their lives yes. before. But then, T, well, Tiwa, Tiwa actually is, is the one that made this whole thing blow out of the proportion. Okay. She should have just allowed T-Bill's answer as her manager, not like a husband. But coming out to say something, it sounds like she's trying to defend him, okay. trying to protect him, trying to hide something. Okay. And she's giving us reason to want to pop even more. Exactly, exactly. And they've been able to keep their lives private for a long time. I yeah. wonder what's happening now. What's happening she just now. felt like she had to say something. It felt like they were insulted by a fellow... Uh, um, I think you know he's also a colleague, etc. I may not have brought up any singles of recent, but you know he's he's also he's also been a Nigerian artist. You know, and also I won't forget what Tiwa said. Tiwa said he she's giving etc. 15 minutes of fame. Can you imagine? That, that, <laughs> that was, was hilarious, honestly. That was an acceptable move anyway for me. <laughs> all right, then after all said and done, we wish them the very very best. <laughs> well, with the way things are going, we just might be having more artist manager weddings in the nearest future in the Nigerian entertainment industry. True. Mm -hmm. Well, information reaching us has it that Emma Naira and her manager, Ubi Franklin, who also doubles as her record label CEO, might be an item. Well, we're not sure yet, it's still a rumor. But sources say the two are supposedly in a love relationship and are trying their possible best to keep it under wraps. Yeah, right. Well, at least <laughs> for now, they're keeping it under wraps so they intend to take it a step further. Well, we'll be here waiting for that next level to happen. To then we say congratulations, supposedly, to <laughs> Ubi and Emma. Emma. Whatever's going on between you guys, let us know, you know. Let us know. I mean, they look good together. Look yeah. at the pictures of them together, they look amazing. They do look too good together. But in the, uh, let's look at the whole manager artist thing. Yes. Is, it, um, is that su is supposedly a new trend? I don't know. I don't even think it fits into it because I don't think um, it's like business a lot of business with and pleasure. relationship actually goes together. I don't think business and pleasure goes together. Oh, there's always some, when they finally break up, they can't stay together. It becomes an you issue. Know, it becomes an issue. It becomes blown out of proportion. Maybe, maybe the, the artist, if it's a female artist, gets yeah. really comfortable with the male, uh, with the manager, mm -hmm. and feels the manager is the only person she can talk to, she can and fall in love to. with. Yeah. And then before you know, love just happens. Well, it happens a lot in Hollywood, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have loads of business, pleasure relationships out there. But, you know, they, they're able to handle it. Some of them. Some of them, very true. Some of them are able to handle it. Well, we wish them luck. We wish Emma and yes, I and her and Ubi Franklin luck. I mean, we, we, we can't wait to have babies from them. And, oh, you know, tweet about them, sure write can. about them. And, you know, come We need them. stories. And they need, we need you know, stories. Yes, give us stories, up. you guys. And invite Do something us to your extraordinary, you know. <laughs> Let the love grow. Anyway, moving from love stories to somewhat of a success story. Nollywood actor Bob Manuel Udoku was recently appointed Senior Special Advisor on Entertainment by Anambra State Governor Willie Obiano. 
He made the announcement via a BB message. I mean, BBM? <laughs> that was something so official. Official. BBM. Well, thank God for BBM. You know, this <laughs> is. Uh, so many news have been spread through BBM this yes. case. Well, the message reads, the governor of Anambra State, Chief Willy Obiano, has appointed me Bob Manuel Udoku, FCAI, his senior special assistant, SSA, on the movie entertainment industry with immediate effect. Immediate effect. Mm -hmm. shop, well, shop. if you recall, Bob Manuel was also the former special advisor on entertainment to the immediate past governor, Peter Obi and to the new governor as well. The new governor actually retained him. Well, congratulations, congratulations to him. Congratulations to him, But really, why are they picking actors out there and you know turning them into politicians? Is uh, well, I think on this particular um, position, it's about entertainment. So who else would you rather pick? You know? Do you uh, well? Well, we want to Bob see Bob Manuel what he is a veteran actor, so I okay. think he has his head. You know, he can actually staple it. You can't really pick actors and actresses who are still starting off because okay. they still want to act, they still want to be out there, they still want fame. You know, so picking them might just sound like you know you're trying to put such great burden in them. But Bob, okay. Bob Manuel is a veteran actor, so I think he can do better. And he 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 looks like a fatherly figure, so he can actually work with um, the government. You know, he can he. Like a like a family like figure, that's okay. better to say than to right, looks like. We actually look forward to what he will be doing to change the entertainment industry. I'm in sorry, what did he do before? Well, we look forward to what more he will do. I don't think he did anything before Bob Manuel. I'm not trying to be, you know, rude or whatever. But really, you know, I, I mean, think he might have, he must have done one, made one contribution or the other. What Maybe have you heard of? pick young people, turn them into actors, train them, blah blah blah. I don't know. Uh, we're looking forward to what we know what we're going to do. What? We're going to keep our eyes out for him, you know, look out for what he will be doing. Well, it's a I, new what, tenor, so. What I think, uh, on the politics, having a new face, I don't think much will really be done by him. It's just come and enter and eat money, that's what I think. Anyway, still on Nollywood, it seemed like one of Nigeria's prolific actor and director has given up on Nigeria. So oh. sad. Really, really it is. <laughs> Sometime in March, director Kunle Afolayan took to his Facebook page to express his frustration about Nigeria and his plans to relocate as he could no longer bear the hardship. Mm, well, it looks like he's made up his mind to really relocate. In a recent interview, he said he has been diagnosed with hypertension and must relocate. When asked if his relocation would not discourage those who are looking up to him, Kumle said, and I quote, I have been diagnosed with hypertension, so I should stay here and die because I want to impress people. It isn't about people anymore. It is now about me and my health. <laughs> he went further to say, I have proven that certain things can be done in this country, but you have to use blood and sweat. All the projects I've done, I have had to use these two. For me to achieve this, whoever is ready to use blood and sweat too might be able to achieve same feat. Right now, I am overwhelmed in a way and I can function from anywhere. I can go to Hollywood and be lecturing African cinema or go to Gambia and be making film or move to Ghana. I love this country, which is why I'm still here. I discourage people from traveling abroad, but my health is wealth. I think it's important that I'm in the right frame of mind for health reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, like he said, his health is very important. I mean, why stay back in a country that's not encouraging you? That's milking you, taking a lot from you, and you're giving so much. Okay, let's not forget that a while back, um, he actually sent a broadcast on okay. his Blackberry that actually he was talking about how you know, this country has really made him very depressed because you know he's, he's, he's made so many movies, so many people hold him in... Uh, you know, highlight it. We think, oh, he's, he's, he's everything. He okay. should own G wagons, he should own properties and properties, but he still lives in a rented property. Whoa. So he's like, he's frustrated, he's tired. People who are doing almost the same thing as he's doing in Hollywood are even doing way better, like times 10, times yeah. 100, better than he is. And it's, it's not helping him because most of his movies, he's done them on loans. Like he's shot his movies on taking loans from banks and, you know, trying to, you know, and, and it's frustrating for him. So I'm not surprised this is coming now because he's said then in that Blackberry uh, broadcast that like he's trying so much not to relocate because he's he's been trying to advocate for people coming back and you know coming back to settle to down here and make something out of their country but he's getting tired so I'm not surprised that he's going to take you know, a, a, that step to yeah. you know relocate him I think it's, it's good for him I, I also understand the fact that uh, here in Nigeria we expect a lot of our celebrities yeah. when we see them on screen you expect them to be rich famous have the best of it Very true. but when he doesn't he doesn't have it you know he seems like he has to 
fake it. I know. The talk of Juliet Ibrahim, you know, holding yeah. the H&M bag. And everyone's yeah. like, why are you not holding Versace and Gucci? So <laughs> I think it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a standard you should meet up to. At the same time, good luck to you, Kulia Fulani. I wish, I hope you, I, we pray you, you find happiness and find, you know, peace of mind and you, your high tension comes down. We wish you best of luck. Amen to that. Okay, now, <laughs> someone has joined the League of Celebrity Landlords. So he's joined for a bit now, but we didn't know he was actually the owner of the property. On a rare day, a Siri, aka Dr. Seed, while promoting his new album, revealed that the house he recently built and currently lives in was bought on mortgage, and he's not ashamed to say it. He says it's a 110 million naira house, and he pays his mortgage monthly. He said, and I quote, I put a mortgage payment plan in place based on the savings I had made four years before I started a career in music. I am still paying for the house and by the grace of God, I will get a second one soon. I pay close to one million naira a month and sometimes more. I'm going to do this for the next 25 years and I am not ashamed to say it. Interesting. Interesting. I've, I've First of all, I need to say congratulations. Congratulations, to Dr. Seed. <laughs> well, he went further to praise Wanda Cole for leaving Maven Records, but expressed his distaste at the habit of some artists leaving a record label and later talking bad about the label. Mm -hmm. He says, and I quote, I am happy and honored to be signed onto Maven Records. I have a lot of respect for Wanda Cole. He made a brave move and I wish him all the best. But I will not support anyone bad mouthing the label. With regards to Maven Records deal, Don Jazzy has given me the opportunity to leave whenever I want to, but I won't leave and start saying something else. Hmm. With his wedding taking place in July, Dr. Sid talked about his fiance, Simi Sola Oshomo, saying she understands what she's getting into. My female fans respect me and I also feel my relationship inspires them in different ways. So I guess that from loss and attraction, it has moved to admiration. <laughs> Congratulations to you, Dr. Seed. I'm happy for him. Yes. He's now a landlord. Yes. Good. I mean, he knows that he should invest. In, in yes, that's very true. That's because when those pictures circulated, everyone thought he just rented a house. Yeah. But we're all wondering why he put Dr. Seed right on the floor because we're like, okay, if you rent a house, can you actually do that you know, to the man's property? The you know, customize the house <laughs> and make it Dr. Seed's house. So everyone was wondering, but we're glad he cleared the air on that. And to know that it's a 110 million naira house and he's gradually paying for the 25 for the next 25 years. Yes. That is a very brave move True. to wake up every day and know that no, every no, you month have you have to, to pay a million naira for the rest almost the rest of your life for the next 25 years you have to pay one yeah. million naira every month what that you owe someone every month you, you collect your salary and you have to put aside the one you owe and let's not forget that he's also a doctor so let's say music becomes bad you know at some point our parents do want us to buy entertainment if you become an actress you become a model there's always a time limit to it and you have to you know fall back fall on back something. To something else but he's a doctor he he has um, a degree in dentistry, dentistry yeah so you know and that's good for him so even if he cannot continue music he can always wake up every month and still pay a million naira off being a dentist Aww. i hope he can actually do that you congratulations know. dr c well we look forward to the babies you yeah. and your and your we look forward to <laughs> July to get pictures and cover your wedding. Yeah, send us invites. A lot of celebrity weddings. We will look forward to all of it. I tell you, I tell you. Nice. Okay, at this point, we'll go on a short break. And when we return, find out why Densia is against the Bring Back Our Girls campaign. And TV presenter Ibuka gets lashed for being a bad boy. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. Now, Dentia is back in the news once again. She's always in the news these days, man. I'm tired. The singer and White Nisha's founder is of the opinion that the Bring Back Our Girls protest being done by Nigerian celebrities should be stopped. Stop it. According to her, she says, we have spoken on social media and they have heard. Now, can this unnecessary protest up and down stop? This happened over a month ago and no one did anything until American celebrity said something. Please, when has a protest ever solved a, a problem in Nigeria? There's something she said there I really can't say. Enlighten me, please. And you all should be protesting to get Boko Haram. She goes further to say, I actually sent out those messages to the American celebrities to tweet about it and for to other celebrities, hashtag beat that. And I'll personally go give these families money when the families are reunited with the daughters. I walk the walk young game, man. This girl, she's on another level. She is, she is gangster. But let's, let's, let's not forget that, uh, we'll show you some pictures, but let's not forget that the people she tweeted to, 
and not even amongst the, the people celebrities who okay. have been tweeting and carrying the bring back the girls placard. So I don't know what you're talking about, Dense, but you have to calm down because we saw the 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 munch, the you know the munch, whatever she she put up. And it's not even the people she was done when they haven't even put it up. So Dancy, you saying you want to give the we understand she's saying giving the families money. money. I don't know why she she has to announce that to us. I mean she, I think um, if you want to do something for someone or for people, don't announce it. Go ahead and do it from the bottom of your heart and just keep quiet about why tell us you're gonna give them money. You're going to go to their house. Do you know them? Do you know where to find them in the first place? That's not charity enough? anymore. That's not even charity. Because charity, whatever you do with your right hand, your left hand should, should not know, know about it. So you actually going all the way and trying to do to put it on on, on Twitter even before it happens. <sighs> And it sounds like she's out there competing with some people. She's competing with the why, world. Why say bit that? I will go personally to give them. Do you know if there are celebrities out there who have put themselves out to even help find those girls and they're not making noise about it? Mm -hmm, there will mm -hmm. be people doing that which doesn't hear about them. Although I actually support her on the, everybody trying to do... It's not a competition of who can carry the power card better, who is carrying it more confidently. It's just... Uh, I just think everybody should try and work towards, you know, bringing back the girls. We understand, but the whole placard thing is becoming very like nauseating. Like, yes. Exactly. Everyone <laughs> is newborn babies and, you know, people are getting married and putting up and everyone is snapping behind white background. Have you snapped yours? Oh, hell no. Oh, I I'm about to snap my But I am, I am, I am, where where is my support? Oh, we should carry one and be like, the squeeze, squeeze, bring squeeze, back the girls. Bring we back want the girls. girls back. Don't get us wrong. We want the girls back. <laughs> Come on, this black car thing is beginning to wear me out. Like I'm just tired of seeing. Some people are seeing it as a, as a way to get popular, to get out there. But I think we should just concentrate more on, you know, helping find the girls mm -hmm. than you know, turn it into a, a fancy show. Yeah. Okay. So I get it that along the line, some people might tend to deviate from the emotion that ought to accompany this campaign and turn it into a jamboree of some sort. But the perception and action of this few in no way can or should outweigh the efforts of so many who genuinely do it. And the results of this great struggle is out there for all to see. I mean, we got the attention of the world to come out and help us. Yes. So please, if you're out there, do something as well, but don't turn it into a fashion parade. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving on to more gist. Yes, so fashion <laughs> parade, you said it right. Anyway, more gist for you guys. Now we all know how there has been rumors about a supposed relationship going on between actress Stella Damasos and her director and ex-husband of Doris Simeon, Daniel Ademino Khan, right? Well, gist has it that it might be more than that. True. All this emanated from a tweet Stella posted on her Twitter page during the Mother's Day celebration and that got a lot of people concluding that they might just be married. The tweet reads, Mrs. Lucy Ademinokon, my prayer warrior and partner, you taught me patience and endurance and helped me understand the power of the name of Jesus. Thank you for your love and kindness. Now some people are of the opinion that when a woman starts to pray for the mother of her supposed boyfriend like this, then there is more to it. What do you think, Simon? <laughs> well, I think um, it's no news. Yeah. I don't think it's, they can, they're hiding it anymore, what's happening between Stella and Daniel. But from, from the look of things, it really looks like they're taking it to the next level. Mm -hmm. If they're married or not is what we cannot confirm yet because there's no picture to it, there's no announcement to it. Okay. But I think there's a lot more to these two people. Yes, I think you're probably so in love that the mother has actually accepted her as a, as a daughter in law daughter already, Lord. even without. We also, we, oh, we know of relationships like that where, you know, the mother is so in love with uh, the son's girl friend that she already takes her as a wife and they're living together I think and uh, you know they're going everywhere together so they're, to me they're married already I even though they're not married yet mm. <laughs> well in all of this well I wish them the best they can yes. go ahead and get married but please Daniel allow the mother of your son get to meet the child once in a while taking the son away from the mother this early is not nice but how do you know that doesn't happen how well he's he's you know, said things like that, that he took him away from her for a while, for, for a while. And uh, there was a time he wrote an article that says um, he just wants his son to be with him. And then Doris has also come out to say, I haven't even seen my child for a while, for a long time. Yeah, and that space is too long for a mother to stay away from the child. Mm, but you know something that happened that period, I, I know of the story when it came out. Okay. But you know, um, Mr. Daniel actually came up to debunk the, debunk the rumors saying that, 
you know, she had seen him, she was on stage and something, something. But you, the only problem, why I always say is, when there's a problem between a man and a woman who yeah. had something, I don't think you coming in between actually would make sense because you never know what really happens. Everyone has their own version, you know. The man comes up and says, no, you saw him last week. And she comes up and says, no, I've not seen him in seven years. So, I, I, well, we don't know what's happening, but we just, if, if really, he's not she's not seen her son then daniel has to do something about it i think stella should talk to him to allow her a mother should always be with the child i think okay then. Okay, okay okay well guys what do you think is there something about these two people or is just a mad prayer let's hear from you we would love to know what you think mm -hmm, of course now from one attention seeking tweet to another one tv host seemed to have something against a particular beauty queen as his tweet suggests Recently, TV host Ebuka made a statement on his Twitter page saying, almost feels like we need a national hashtag to help beg that our former beauty queen to stop nipping and talking her face. Uh, whatever preference <laughs> Ebuka to say this or whom he is referring to, with this is what we cannot say. But what we know for sure is that Ebuka's tweet sure provoked the fellow entertainer to give him a piece of her mind. Although the name of the beauty queen wasn't mentioned, but on seeing what Ebuka had written, singer Adokie took to Twitter and lashed back at the host saying, Ebuka or whatever you call yourself, someone please tag him for me. If you don't stop harassing ladies, you will face me soon. I am serious. I am serious. <laughs> Whoa, now that is a big threat. Someone has been a bad bad boy. He'd better watch his back, you know. <laughs> but Adokie just might be behind him. <laughs> but really, him. he didn't. He didn't uh, mention anyone. He didn't refer what he was saying to anyone. Can really? I say who I think he's referring to? Who was had loads of? I think uh, as you're saying. No, for real. He didn't mention anybody. So I'm sure he just said that out of uh, being a bukazi always. He's always a naughty guy trying. But to that is forward. wrong. You always attacking ladies. What? 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 Like he's been, been doing that. So many people broken your heart, or he, are you? A part of the other team, you know, yeah. you know like <laughs> the ladies other and team. you're just like, you know. So well, please, Ebuka, stop attacking ladies, else we will join Adoki and attack you. Duh. This is the squeeze. Where we squeeze out everything squeezable. Take it easy, darling. Do okay. you need a drink? No. All right. Let's go on a short break and when we return, find out who made our top 10 countdown for the week. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. Now it's time for our top 10 countdown of the week. Today we talk about the top 10 Nigerian Hollywood actors. They are Nigerians and they have made us proud and they continue to entertain us. Starting at number 10 is John Boyega. John Boyega is a British actor of Nigerian origin, best known for playing Moses in the 2011 sci-fi film Attack the Block. Boyega was cast in the film adaptation of Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's book, Half of a Yellow Sun. At number nine is Adetomiwa Edu. Adetomiwa Edu is born to a Nigerian father and a half Ghanaian, half English mother. The actor is best known for his role as an alien in the television show Merlin, and also played the role of a soldier returning from the war in Afghanistan in Law and Order UK. Moving on to number eight is Nonso Anuzi. Nonso is an English Nigerian actor who has worked on stage, film, and television. Nonso played a role in William Shakespeare's King Lear and won the I. Charleston Award in 2004 for his performance. Impressive. Moving on to number seven is Razak Adoti. Razak Adoti is a British actor, producer, and screenwriter born in Forest Gate, London, and of Nigerian descent. He landed his first professional screen role on a British television show, Press Gang, playing a police officer. Adoti was also cast as Yamba in Steven Spielberg's feature epic. And miss that alongside Anthony Hopkins, Morgan Freeman, and Matthew McCogney. Oh, these people are doing us proud. I'm telling you. They are. Alias <laughs> actors. What? Dayo Okeni is at number six. Ola Dayo Okeni got the attention of movie lovers for playing the role Thresh in The Hunger Games. I love that movie. I love it too. Do you know I watched it? I didn't realize that he was a Nigerian. I didn't even realize it was a Nigerian in it. I just watched it and enjoyed it. Interesting. You should look out for that then. <laughs> well, still on our top 10 Nigerian Hollywood actors countdown. Taking us to number five sport is David Oyelowo. 
Oyelowo was born in Oxford, England to Nigerian parents. He's appeared in TV films like Barney Hall, Shoot the Messenger, and the number one ladies detective agency. And of recent, he actually starred in the Harper production movie. Um, I think it's called The Butler. Yes, yes The yeah. Butler. So big ups to Nigerian he, people making us proud outside well. the country. He's amazing, well. amazing. Well, standing at number four sports is Genga Akinagde. Denga is an American Nigerian actor best known for his role as Chris Hartlow on the HBO original series The Wire and is currently in The Good Wife as Pastor Isaiah Easton. Yes, you know I watch that. Why do I keep watching this movie that I don't realize these people are Nigerians? I don't think it's just you. It's a lot of us who oh. do that. Well, he also starred as a CIA agent in 24, that series that everybody seems to watch. I don't mm -hmm. know why we like that 24 series, but... I never I watched it. Really I really never found anything interesting about it, so I think better. <laughs> anyway, right. and number three is Hakim K. Kazim. Hakim K. Kazim is a British Nigerian actor who is best known for his portrayal of Georgie Skutaganda in a 2000, 2004 motion picture Hotel Rwanda. He also starred as Colonel Ike Dubaku in season seven of the Fox television series 24. Mm. Interesting. Well, taking us to number two is Adewale Akinwoyo Agbaje. Adewale is a British Nigerian actor and former fashion model, best known for his roles as Lochnan in The Mummy Return and Nwana Mobusi in The Born Identity and Mr. Eko on Lost. He also stared as Simon Adebisi on Oz. He's fluent in several foreign languages, including Yoruba, Italian, and Swahili. He can get along in a few other languages, including French. Finally, 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 on our number one sport, drum roll please, is Chiwetal Ejiofor. Four. Chiwetal Umeadi Chiwetal Ejiofor 4 is a British Nigerian actor, film, television, and theater. He has received numerous awards and nominations for acting, including the BAFTA Orange Rising Star Award, five Golden Globe Award nominations, and the Lawrence Olivia Award for Best Actor. Ejiofor is known for his portrayal of Okwe in Dirty Pretty Things, Lola in Kinky Boots, and Solomon Nathop in 12 Years a Slave for which he received a Academy Award and Golden Globe nominations, along with the BAFTA Award for Best Actor. Well, there you have it, our top 10 Nigerian Hollywood actors doing us proud outside the shows of this country. Mm -hmm. Did we miss anyone out or is there something about these people you would love to share with us? Then share your comments with us on our social media platform scrolling on your screen right now. We would love to hear from you. Okay, people, it's time for a short break. And when we come back, trust me, there's a lot people need to stop doing. And we'll be ranting about it right here on this show. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, people. It's time for our run segment of the show called Stop It. I will take the honors and start first. Okay. Now, this is about people who don't keep the time. There's something called, that we, if I let's stop with the whole African time thing. When someone gives you an appointment for a particular time, be earlier than punctual. Don't stick with punctuality. Punctuality is being there at that time. Being earlier than punctual is being one, one hour before the exact time. We need to learn that. I know people I say, um, you know, somebody brought my attention to the fact that uh, what if you're going on a date? Should you be there earlier than punctual? I, I think you should be, be there earlier than punctual, whatever. Just keep to time. I know people are going to crucify you for saying that. No, but but please, true. stop doing the African time. It's not working. It's not helping. And it will not help you grow. Please stop it. I would learn as well. I should stop it too because I'm actually <laughs> guilty. Well, I want to rant about people who travel abroad, you know, and try to get married there. And it's become an issue because they keep deporting people and it's, 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 it's really sad. There's been, I was watching in the news four days ago, I was reading a, a magazine and, you know, four Nigerians were actually deported back to Nigeria because they were involved in sham marriages. Oh. They were involved in people who were desperate to get married. And let's not blame them because it's a the, it's the, it's the society. There's this burden on women and once you're 24, once you're 25, you have to get married. I'm not against marriage, to be very sincere. If I found a husband at 17, I will be married by now. But please, let's all calm down and let's teach our daughters to aspire towards greatness, not only to marriage. Of course, marriage is cool, but let us not put so much pressure that they end up traveling abroad and actually putting our name and, you know, putting more than our name and, you know, dragging our, our name into the, into the mud. Let's try and 
calm down. Let's teach our daughters how to work and make money. So at least even when they get married, they can assist these men and also make great homes and you know build great foundations to actually train their children on. But please, let's calm down because this whole thing of Nigerians traveling abroad to get the green card and get married, they need to get married, they get into abusive marriages, they get killed in marriages, they get they have to, you know, they start asking for help and trying to run away from marriages. It's a big deal. But at the same time, I am not against marriage. Whoever finds love, please get married. But please, let us calm down on the pressure. Let's calm down on putting pressures on females to get married so early and get married from course. Very true. You, made it. you actually raised down. it. Very important issue there. Thank it's important so to me anyway. And you, you might disagree, but I say stop it. Stop the pressure. Stop the pressure on women. Please calm down, everybody. Stop it. We want to say a big thank you to all of you for sticking with us on the show today. Let's do this again. Same time, same station. And remember to join in the conversation on all our social media platforms. You stand a chance to be on our news story. Simply do something worth talking about. Tweet, tweet at us about it, and bam, you are on the squeeze. Okay, we've got to go. Bye for now. See you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.